Footloose for the hour. It's time once again for Diversity Inc. The CEO and the COO are here. Sometimes I can't remember which is which. Doesn't matter, y'all, who's the CEO and the CEO, right? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Hold it. Wait a minute. Stop the presses. When do we get so oh so we we'll hear, we'll learn the top fifty next month, right? Yes, on my on May seventh. So y'all not gonna cheat and give me a little uh preview who the top fifty gonna be? <laughs> oh we do we need to do something I talk we need to talk offline, Brittany, because I want to do something special for a change on the top fifty. Uh you all is this a how do you all do it? This is an event on May seventh, right? Yes. And this is an evening or or is it an evening event? It's actually a day-long event. Um, so in the morning um, at Cipriani on Wall Street in New York City, um, we have learning sessions um, beginning at 8 a.m. where we have executives talk about um, the uh, programs that they've put in place that make their companies um, uh, good around diversity and inclusion. And then in the evening, uh, beginning at 5 o'clock with a, uh, I love to say, top-shelf open bar reception, um, we kick off the dinner, and uh, we end around 10. This year, we're going to have uh, Patti LaBelle as our closing musical entertainment and a fireside chat with Trevor Noah. So it's going to be a really exciting event. Wait, 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 repeat that. You say your, I think your phone broke up a little bit. You say you're going to have who? Patti LaBelle is performing um, after the announcement, and we're going to have a fireside chat with Trevor Noah. All right, so listen, how early does it, so y'all should have, we should have had a breakfast so I could do my <laughs> show live from Cipriani with some, oh, with some wow. of the people. That's what we should do. Is it too late to do that? We should organize that. Let's talk about it. Let's see what we can do. Br Brittany's going to get on the phone with y'all. Can we do that, Brittany? Uh, yeah. So uh, <laughs> we're going to try to organize a breakfast at Cipriani because that's a nice place anyway. And we're going to, we should try to do a live broadcast because what you all doing is very, very, uh, important. The top 50 announcement event, 2019 Diversity Inc. Top 50 announcement event as they look at the top 50 most diverse companies, corporations in America. But but even leading up to that, we talked to them about some of the important stories um, of the day. And um, you all uh, are talking about Taraji Henson, as a matter of fact, and her opening up about her depression and her anxiety. Yes. Um, and, and Mark, when, um, when, when Luke and I, uh, and Luke is the CEO and I am the COO. <laughs> okay. But when we were talking about, um, you know, uh, our articles to um, send over to discuss on the show, um, it was important um, to me as a black woman for this one to be in the list because um, we know that especially young people, um, they're sometimes ashamed of, of the things that they're going through. They think that other people aren't because they look like they have it so together. And when I think of um, women in Hollywood or women in general, um, particularly black women that just seem like so strong and on point all the time, um, Taraji B. Henson comes up at the top of that list. And so to know that she came out to talk about this and even started a foundation um, named after her late father, um, to basically help find, um, you know, a mental health professionals um, that look like the people that they're that they're going to help, which are black people. I thought that was important because people need to know it's okay um, if you're dealing with anxiety. It's okay if you're dealing with depression, and it's okay because other people that you look at and are strong, they get help and need help too. Um, so that was one of the main reasons yeah. why this story was so important to talk about. And 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 a lot of times we as black folk don't want to talk about that and admit that. Is considered uh, a, a sign of embarrassment and weakness. Correct? Yes, absolutely. And especially, I mean, if you think about um, women at work, anyway, right? Uh, we have to be strong. Um, you know, we've got to be like the boys. And so, um, you know, and, and, and my goodness, in some companies, don't say you're having a baby. Oh my God, your life is over. Yeah. And yeah. so, to know that it's just one more layer of uh, of something to be ashamed of, of another thing that you have to cover for, or another reason to feel like you're dealing with imposter syndrome, which is the feeling that you don't belong because mm -hmm. everybody else is normal and you're not. Um, people need to know that they're not alone, that others deal with it, that they respect and look to are dealing with it so they can get the help they need. Yeah, yeah. So, no, that's that's important. 
that's important to acknowledge. Uh, 866-99-SERIES, uh, 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 866-997-4748. Also, uh, as we look at, 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 at artists and entertainers like Taraji, you mm-hmm. all have also got a story up about uh, the Queen Bee, Beyonce. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but Mark, before we move off of um, I'm sorry. Uh, talking about Taraji, um, Luke is actually um, the vice chair of the board for NOD. It's the National Organization on Disability. Sure. And um, uh, Carol Glazer is the president of NOD. And Carol talked, um, I mean, just in such a touching way at one of the events we had last year about um, depression and anxiety actually being a unseen disability. Um, and so, yeah. you know, I, I think it's important to bring that up because it's not that there's something wrong with you. It's kind of like, you know, the black community having been demonized for drug use and now it's a, now it's a sickness, right? Um, I think, you know, having a people like Carol, for example, come out and talk about her issues yeah. And organizations like NOD talking about this right. is very important. So I just wanted to bring that point up. So, well, well, um, Luke, I'm going to turn to you about Beyonce. <laughs> well, well, before we do that, though, let me ask this question, though. And forgive my ignorance. I should know this, but I don't. You said disability. Yeah. Can people file for and claim disability because of depression and anxiety? Is that possible? Now, I, I don't want to get into waters where, you know, based on co- the individual company policies, um, <laughs> I'm not an expert, um, but it and is being recognized. Anxiety okay. and depression um, are I mean, being I, I, recognized. I mean, the reason I'm asking, is it the kind of thing we need to be advocating more companies and whatnot in enabling people to do that? That's really why I'm asking. Or is it is it is it taken for granted that that's what it is? I, I don't know. That's why I'm asking. Um, Luke, 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 what do you think? Well, I think, you know, first of all, I, I don't want to encourage anybody to, um, act, you know, to claim a disability within a company that may not accept it or may fight you on it. Uh, if you're working for a company, for example, like Ernst & Young, which I think has the most evolved thinking around mental differences and, and has acted on it, I think there you're safe. But outside of that, I would be very, very careful and you want to speak with your doctor, you'll want to speak with a lawyer if you're in that much difficulty, and you okay. should. Right. Um, and and it's, it's one of those things. It's a common human mm-hmm. condition. It needs to be treated. Don't let yourself suffer alone mm-hmm. with it. You're not alone. There's millions of people like you, but go get help. Yeah, yeah. All right. Uh, Luke's going to talk about the next story, Beyonce. All right, so y'all, I've y'all been, are fri- y'all are friends anyway, right, Luke? Beyonce, no, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> no. Although I have to say, I heard y'all were friends. Can, I thought y'all text each other. Okay, go ahead. I'm sorry. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> Don't tell my wife. <laughs> Whose wife would be mad at somebody for knowing Beyonce? They'd be like, "Well, when we all go hang out, I would think, you know." <laughs> I was about to say, like, I was like, Joe, can you hook me up? Say, hey, girl, when when, when we, the three of us going out, the four of us hanging out, shoot. Exactly. (laughs) (laughs) I I just want to know what was going through the head of the people at Reebok when they have a meeting with Beyonce and everybody in the room is white but her. What were they Uh, thinking? That's really beyond the scale of, you know, just bad business. It's funny. I mean, come on. Yeah, that's just That's stupid. just, how dumb do you have to be? I just mm-hmm. don't understand. Oh, you know, Mark, it's doing. interesting because Luke and I um, uh, were actually just having this conversation yesterday morning. And um, I'm a 4'10", um, blonde-haired uh, black woman, mm-hmm. petite. Mm-hmm. And um, when we have meetings where we're making, you know, decisions around, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars, when people come in the room, um, they automatically assume that I'm the assistant or I'm not the decision maker, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And I think, unfortunately, that in this situation, um, corporations have got to a place because we've allowed them to where they feel like they can just show up however, right. wherever right. they, they want to, and they're not considering who's really the decision maker. And I think this is one of those cases where that's gone wrong. So wear Reebok. You need us for your for your Ivy, you know, athletic wear brand. 
Ivy Park Athletic Wear brand. And, you know, so we're just here to um, listen to what you say you want, and then we're going to do what we want and go on about our day. Mm -hmm. And I am so proud of Beyonce for just saying, you know what, Uh uh-uh, we're not doing this. And, you know, the fact that Jay-Z was also making sure that performances didn't happen at the <clears throat> at the Super Bowl. Um, I love them for what they're doing as a couple to make sure that people respect um, our diversity of, uh, of gender, race, thought, ability. I just love everything about what they're doing. Yeah, yeah, no, it is. Mark, it is. I can't tell you. I can't tell you how many meetings I've had with Carol in the room. And if Carol is going to make the decision, and I know that and she knows that, and the supplier or whatever is going on and on and on, addressing only me. Right. And like she, like leave, she's not I even turn, there. Like she's glass. Yeah, she's not even there. That's right. So I turn to her and I go, guess we're not doing business with those guys, huh? And she'll just go, no. And that's the end of them. And it doesn't matter and, and, how much and it's really, I, it's, like I, I think there's a huge takeaway here for leaders. Like, you know, yeah. don't just, you know, because it's your nephew or, you know, some young person right. who went to the same school as you, you hire them and you send them. Mm-hmm. Be very, very conscious of, of, of who your client is or who the person is you're trying to influence mm-hmm. and make sure you've considered who they are in the process as well, not just who you are every day and are comfortable for being and have never had to think about who you are or who you have Amen. to be when you go to work. Amen. Amen. And the other thing, if you're going to buy something or do business with somebody or go work for somebody, do a little you know, internet web search uh, jujitsu. Go look up executive leadership team. Look up diversity on that company's website. See what comes up. And if you see nothing but insensitivity, I'll I'll put it kindly. Uh, If you don't see anything that appeals to you or doesn't speak to who you are, don't give them your money or your resources or your life, your work. Don't do it. Go find someplace else that's going to respect you. Yeah, yeah. Yep. No, you're absolutely they right. They exist. Uh, 866-99-SERIOUS. Uh, okay, uh, basketball coach at uh, North Carolina. Ooh, okay, so let me collect my thoughts on this one. Because uh, <laughs> I, I go from being angry, I, I go from being happy that my children aren't old enough to have been <laughs> playing on her team, um, and then I go to, um, again, a major lesson here. And that is that um, it's not enough to say, and especially now, it is not enough to say that I didn't know comments like that offended people. Um, if you are halfway woke, then you're then you know what's going on in this country, where you know people are speaking up and out about what is happening to them, and so you know, and you need to be more conscious of the language that you're using. Um, and you need to actually, you know, walk, especially when you're the shepherd of a team and you're responsible for leading people. You need to understand what could potentially stop people from being as productive as they possibly can. Mm-hmm. So she has no excuse to say, I didn't know. Um, and I'm sorry. I don't care if you say you actually didn't say, you know, string them up, um, have hang them with a noose, or if you said they're going to hang us up with rope. You should have the understanding to know that any language like that is unacceptable, and especially when you're talking to young people, and especially when you're talking to black women. So, so she, she said, said to her like players a, they would be hanged from trees with nooses if they didn't improve in future games. She also accused of telling her players to do a war chant to honor the Native American ancestry of an assistant coach. Yep, and then she comes back and says, I didn't say nooses. I said they're going they're, they're to rope us up. And my thing so is, it better. doesn't matter if you said hang with nooses or rope us up. You don't say that that's to better. a bunch of, a, a, a young better. group of black people. You just don't. That's better. That's better. It, it, yeah. Both, isn't, both, both are unacceptable. You just yeah. don't. If you're paying attention to what is going on around you. Right. And I think right. that is the underlying livelihood. message here. Your very livelihood. If your very livelihood depends on black people, too. I mean, exactly. The, pay attention to the things that impact them, help them, and the things that may, that may hurt them. And if you're not paying attention to that, you have no right leading a team. No, no right business, whatsoever. You have, no, you have no business being in that position. Real quick, we're almost out of time. Uh, uh, next and last story. I interviewed him last week, Mayor Pete. He is surging. What do you, what do you all think about it? I think he's awesome. He's my favorite. Um, he's my favorite candidate in the pack so far. He speaks intelligently, calmly, thoroughly, and I think the Republicans are afraid of him because he's just that good. 
I don't think you could put up a 78-year-old man against a, a bully savant like Trump. He's going to get skewered in, the, in, the, um, in any debate with him. I think you need a young man. He represents the median age of this country. He's the median mm-hmm. age of this country, not twice as old. The so country. so last but week I had a chance to ask him about him firing the black police chief or demoting him, mm-hmm. I should say, and the whole all lives matter thing. I mean, he 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 gave a decent answer. I think he acknowledged some of his mistakes, but I don't think those are issues or incidences that are going to go away. I don't know that. Did, I mean, I'm glad to hear you bring this up because I read through that. And he didn't say all lives matter in response to black lives matter. Right, I know, right, um, right. So, I, you know, so the, the all lives matter quote is somewhat out of context. Now, the police, black police chief incident is a little bit more troubling in it my is. mind. It is. Um, so, so we have to look closely. Yeah, folks, we're out of time. I'm sorry. DiversityInc.com, if all minds are clear, it has been made plain. Uh, and... Uh, <laughs>